This is a quick lesson on powers of 10. The first part we're going to talk about is when you have a positive exponent. So if you have something like this, 10 to the power of 2, if you wrote that out as a product of factors, if you wrote it out with all the numbers involved, you'd write basically 10 times 10. You'd write down two tens. Simplified form means work it out. So when you work it out, it's 100. So if you have 10 to the power of 4, you'd write out product of factors. And then in simplified form, it's 10,000. 10 to the power of 7, you'd write out 7 tens. And then you'd also would work out to 10 million. Now, there's a cool trick you can do to do these. You don't have to work them out, you know, item by item. You can just do this trick. If you notice, if you have an exponent of 2, a positive 2, you have two zeros in your answer. It's a 1 with two zeros. 10 to the power of 4 is 1 with four zeros. And 10 to the power of 7 is 1 with seven zeros. So that's just a real cool trick for working out positive exponents of 10. So the exponent tells how many zeros there are when you simplify it. So 10 to the third is 1 with three zeros or 1,000. 10 to the 1 is 1 with 1 zero. 10 to the power of 8 is 1 with 8 zeros. So you can always do this trick. Makes life real easy. So we're going to talk about some negative exponents and also zero exponent. So first we're going to start with what we know. 10 to the third is the same thing as writing out 10 times 10 times 10. Now you could also put a 1 in there because identity property allows that. Anything times 1 is still the same thing. So it's still going to work out to 1,000. You're going to see why I'm using that 1 here in a moment. 10 to the power of 2. 10 times 10, you could also stick a 1 in there. So it's basically like we were saying before, 1 with two zeros. 10 to the power of 1, it's just a single 10. You could also write it as 1 times 10. And it's a 1 with one zero. 10 to the power of 0. This is where things can get confusing. If you have 10 to the 0 power, it's basically a 1 with no zeros. So anything to the 0 power always works out to 1. A lot of kids want to say that it works out to 0, but it works out to 1. Anything to a 0 power works out to 1. There's a lot of other mathematical proofs you can do to learn about why. At this point though, just realize anything to the zero power is one. Then we're going to get into negative exponents. I'm just going to give you a quick one here and then we're going to talk more about it in the next frame. It's basically one-tenth or one-tenth as a decimal. Now notice if you look at the pattern here, we had three zeros, two zeros, one zero, no zeros, and then it started sliding. The, if, if you think of a decimal sliding, it keeps sliding left once as we go smaller and smaller with the exponents. So let's look at the next frame. So if you have something 10 to the negative 2, you can think of that as you can do 1 tenth times 1 tenth, which is 1 hundredth, 10 times 10. So as a decimal, it's in the hundredths place. As a fraction, it's 1 over 100. Now wasn't 10 to the 2 100? Basically, anytime you have a negative exponent, if you're making it into a fraction, anytime you have a negative exponent, you just stick 1 as a numerator and then work it out normally for the denominator. 10 to the power of 4, if you were to write it out as a product of factors, that'd be 1 tenth times itself 4 times. Then you have, as a decimal, well, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1 with 4 zeros. It could be, so that's 10,000, 1 ten thousandth. Or you can think of it as, hey, 1 over 10,000, 1 with four zeros. 10 to the negative 5, you could write out 5 one tenths and multiply them. That's going to be the hundred thousandths. 1 over 100,000, 1 with five zeros. I want to point out some cool things with these as well. An exponent of negative 2, two zeros involved in the 100, two zeros involved total, including the one in front of the decimal. 
some little tricks for you to remember this. So for an exponent of negative 4, for the fraction form, it's 1 over 10,000, four zeros. So it's basically 1 over 10 to the fourth. Over here for the decimal, there's a total of four zeros involved, including the zero in front. Same thing with 10 to the negative 5. You've got five zeros involved in all the answers. You've got five zeros after the one. Also, you have five zeros, including the one in front of the decimal for the decimal form. So these are cool little tricks you can use to figure these out. So to review, 10 to the power of 7 is going to be 1 with 7 zeros. 10 to the negative 7 is going to be 1 over that first answer. So it's going to be 1 over 1 with 7 zeros. As a decimal, you're going to have a total of 7 zeros with a decimal after the first zero. A total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A total of 7 zeros. And then finally, you've got anything to the zero power, which is going to work out to 1.